Hi, this is Fraude and welcome back to Actualize Now to CV. Today you'll learn how to install the habits you need to do great work and eventually make your mark in the world. If you see anything I could have done better in this video, then I would highly appreciate if you tell me in the comment section. Today's ideas come from the great book, The Creative Habit by Twyla Tharp. The Creative Habit, subtitle, Learn It and Use It for Life. Twyla Tharp is uh, one of the greatest choreographers of America. She has created over 130 dances for her company, as well as for the New York City Ballet, and the, the Paris Opera Ballet, and a bunch of other organizations. And uh, she says that, she stresses the point that creativity is really for anyone. It's for a business person who wants to find a new way to close the sale. It can be also be for a student who wants to find more effective ways of studying. It can, uh, for example, be a parent who wants uh, their child to see the world in more than just one way. And with her decades of experience, since she started her work in 1965, there's a lot we can learn about creativity from Twyla. So if you're into that, I think you'll love the book as much as I did. And just let's jump into the first big idea, which is Mozart. Twyla talks about how Mozart was the child of Leopold Mozart, who had a really thorough education in music. And although he, Mozart had a huge advantage, huge advantage by having his father be a music teacher, or be very good at music and support him throughout his childhood, that um, doesn't uh, mean that uh, Mozart was some naive prodigy that just sat down on his keyboard and with, uh, with God whispering in his ear, just let music flow from his fingertips. That, uh, Twala says that that might be a good way, image for selling tickets to a movie, but it is far from reality. Because Mozart worked furiously hard. By the time he was 28 years old, his hands were deformed because of his practice, performances, and gripping his quill pen for writing his music. And uh, he had to constantly overcome conditions like uh, raising a family, composing in music pieces, just like before the curtains went up, just before the curtain went up, and he was constantly struggling with money. So yes, it's true that uh, Mozart had, had some innate talent and gifts, but they were not the core factors determining that he, the masterpieces he made. I think, it's, I think he made like 24 symphonies before he made something worthwhile and lasting in his 25th. So yes, he had a lot of innate talent, but a hard work ethic outworked that a lot. So discipline and a hard work ethic is what we need to have if we want to do great creative work. Our second big idea is rituals. Twala says that uh, every single morning she wakes up at 5.30 a.m., puts on her clothes, goes outside her home in Manhattan, hails a cab, and tells a driver to take her to the gym, where she works out for two hours. But she says that her ritual is not the workout. The ritual is getting into the cab. Because First steps are always hard. Writing those first words in an essay, starting to work on those ideas for your business project, or um, brushing those first strokes on a canvas for a painting or, or drawing. And uh, to make sure that we keep taking those first steps each and every day, because the hardest thing is always to start, we need to deploy rituals. The rituals, when we do them right before our creative work, kind of tell us that I have done this before, I liked it, and I can do it again. So when all those fears and doubts start creeping in, our rituals help us start off our days strong. I have a ritual of meditating each morning for 20 minutes because I know it focuses my mind and it helps me control my response when I get impulsive emotions like I don't really feel like working right now or this is really scary. Twala has a ritual of getting into her cab each morning. What are your rituals that you need to deploy to consistently make sure that you start your days strong and don't whimper off from your creative work? Our third big idea is the bubble. Twala says that when she looks back at those times when she did her best work, 
All those times where all, the, all of that work was produced while she was in what she calls the bubble. She uh, reduced all of her distractions and pleasures and put herself in a single-minded isolation chamber, cut off from all distractions. And she says that when she commits to a project, she doesn't try to expand her contact with the world, she tries to cut it off. So you can imagine it like um, this small ring, where here's Twyla, happy doing her creative work, and outside are all of the distractions, the emails, the phone calls, and everything. But when she is in her bubble, she's doing her best creative work. And uh, Stephen Pressfield echoes this wisdom in Do the Work. He says that Stephen King works every single day. He, uh, his birthday, 4th of July, or Christmas, he works. And one of the reasons for that is because it's so important to keep up the momentum. When you keep showing up every single day, it's much easier to keep up your momentum than if you stop. And also if you have distractions blowing up your mind. And therefore, Stephen asks us, how much time can you spare each day? For that interval, close the door. And short of a family emergency or the outbreak of World War III, don't let anybody in. Just keep working. So, to apply some context to this, every single day I make sure that I get one to four, or one to three blocks of deep work, where I work for 90 minutes in each of those time blocks. And in those blocks, I refuse to go online. I don't go online before I'm finished with all my time blocks, because it distracts my focus and prevents me from doing great work. So when and for how long are you going to immerse yourself inside the bubble, that distraction-free environment where you can keep putting out consistent and quality work? Think about that. It is really the core habit if you want to do great creative work, in my opinion. And our fourth big idea is an A in failure. Twala says that when she records three hours of improvisational material with her dancers, but only chooses to use 30 seconds of them, because only 30 seconds is useful, she earns a straight A in failure. And uh, that's the equivalent of a writer writing 2,000 words, banging out a really good chapter, but when he goes on to look at it, he only chooses three. That's 99.7% failure. And that's just insane. And of course, Twala says that, yes, that is painful, but it's absolutely necessary, at least for her, because she needs to get through all of those bad dance moves and to get to the good stuff, which often comes at the end of those improvisational sessions. And uh, Ryan Holiday echoes this wisdom in The Obstacle is the Way, where he says that failure shows us the way by showing us what isn't the way. He talks about how failure is really carving us a path. Imagine that you're on this path towards great work, and failure shows that no, you're not uh, doing it right. And no, you're not doing it quite right. You need to keep doing it in this direction, but really helping us. In his book, Crazy Good, Steve Chandler talks about experiments. Experiments never fail, because when we experiment, we're just as eager to find out what doesn't work as what does. So, another, um, and by the way, the next time you find yourself getting all frustrated about your mistakes, remember this question. If Mozart, Beethoven, Michael Jordan, and Einstein made mistakes once in a while, what makes you think that you'll be the exception? Here's earning straight A's in failure, learning what works and what doesn't. Our fifth big idea is the Hemingway Bridge. Did you know that the author Ernest Hemingway would stop in the middle of a sentence so he would know where to start his next day? Stwala calls this building a bridge to the next day, and she says it's really important because it makes sure that we keep showing up the next day and that we know what to do. It's uh, all very important, like rituals, getting to get a good creative day. And Austin Kleon echoes this wisdom in Show Your Work, 
with this idea of chain smoking, in other words, chain creating. And he says that when you are finished with a project, instead of just simply stopping and waiting for feedback or worrying about what's next, use the end of one project to immediately light up the end start of another project. And um, then you can um, just do what's right in front of you. I do this by always making sure that I put a note in eyesight or a book, because then I know what's next. What can you do to make sure that you always build a bridge to the next day, so you know what you need to start? The word of procrastination and uh, the resistance that we often talk about in these videos. Well, that's the Hemingway Bridge. Make sure you build one, as you earn straight A's in failure, knowing what does work and what doesn't. And you need to immerse yourself in the bubble every single morning. No distractions, only you and your creative work. While I'm deploying the rituals to make your, may I give you a strong start on your days, knowing that Mozart didn't achieve greatness only because of his innate talent, but also because of his insanely hard work ethic. He worked furiously hard. That was a quick look at the creative habit. Thank you to all of Tharp. Now what's the one idea that jumped out at you? And now think about how you can apply it to your life starting today. And of course, if you saw anything I could have done better in this video, I would highly appreciate it if you tell me in the comment section. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Have another awesome day, and keep actualizing. See ya.